Hey guys, Theory here. I'm a 3230 experienced multi gladiator Windwalker monk in Arena, and I stream Windwalker content regularly on Twitch at twitch.tv slash TheoryTV. Since Dragonflight Season 1 is just around the corner, I thought there's no better time to make a Windwalker guy than now. Today we will go over different talent builds for Windwalker in PvP, as well as the best racials for Windwalker now since the new trinket bonus and profession items grant a combined 15% relentless buff, making some of the old races you guys played not necessarily the best choice. We will cover defensive cooldowns as well as offensive cooldowns to give you a general idea of when to press things and when not to. I will also show you guys Windwalker's burst rotation. I also have a couple tips and tricks you guys may not have known prior to this video. Windwalker Monk is extremely fun, however can be punished easily if not played correctly. So let's get into it now guys. So for the first talent portion of the video, we're going to be covering the Storm Earth Fire build. So uh, just right away on the Monk Hand side of the tree, we have Soothing Mist. So you're going to be taking this so you can slot into some healing increases and um, healing modifiers. And an additional roll charge here, which is great. Extra mobility is always welcome. So we have our improved roll. Expel Harm um, healing increase with crit chance here from Vigorous Expulsion. Grace of the Crane, flat 8% healing increase for you as a Windwalker. 40% Vivify healing here. Um, every 10 seconds you get an instant Vivify proc. So I will leave a wake aura in the description below for this talent here. So it basically just highlights a Vivify on your screen whenever you have one available, which will be an instant cast. Uh, Calming Presence, Damage Reduction, Rise and Sun Kick. So that's just your main uh, single target spender, which is used all the time inside Arena because it's big damage. Uh, Tiger Slash, so this is a Root Break and a 70% sorry 70 flat. Uh, movement speed increase, but it can you can be slowed like right after out of it, so it's not like a paladin freedom. Uh, disable, so this is our slow uh, for one walker. It just applies a slow instantly, and if you reactivate the ability, it'll be a root, so you can dr that root all the way down. Um, paralysis here, so we take para with the reduced cooldown here. Um, detox, so this is a poison and disease cleanse. It's super good into Shadow Priest because you can dispel Devouring Plague as well as Rogues. You can dispel their poisons and stuff. So, yep, you're going to be playing Detox pretty pretty much all the time. Uh, if you're Ferocity of Zuen here, we have a flat 4% damage increase, which is great. More damage is always welcome as well. Um, Windwalker Kick here, so you need to take this, of course. Transcendence, so this is your portal, that's your main defensive cooldown, pretty much as a monk. Great cooldown, very fun to use. Um, Fortifying Brew, so Fortifying Brew actually received quite a big nerf going into Dragonflight. It's it's either a 4 or a 6 minute cooldown now, depending what talents you're going to be picking below here. Okay, so Chi Wave, we're basically just taking Chi Wave to have access to Profound Rebuttal here, which is Expel Harm Crit Healing, which is great. Expel harms are going to be hitting quite big with this, so yeah. And, and increased healing is always great for Windwalker. Um, we have Celerity here, so it reduces the cooldown of roll by 5 seconds and maximum charge by 1. So we'll have 3 rolls once we're slotted into Celerity and Improved Roll here. And then for this uh, Fortifying Bruin talent thing, I'll pick this one here. I'll take Iron Shell Brew, increases armor and dodge chance. So if you take the other one, it's just a flat 4 minute cooldown for uh, Fortifying Brew. But that's not necessarily like worth taking over this because how often are you going to be having a four minute cooldown come up again inside of an arena, right? Because there's sometimes where you won't press your fortifying brew until like a minute in the game. So I'm naturally leaning towards Iron Shell Brew for Windwalker. Okay, so we have Strength of Spirit. Expel Harm healing is increased by 100% based on your missing health. So the lower you are, the more it'll heal, which is great. So it's like a it's like a kind of last stand expel harm. It's great. Um, improved touch of death. So this ability alone, I feel like, has made touch of death a lot less buggy inside of PvP instances. So this is a must. Increases the damage of it too, so it'll eat shields bigger and stuff. If I'm not mistaken, um, dampen harm here. So we have access to two walls now, which were on kind of the same talent tree before, which is super good. So yeah, we're gonna have dampen harm. 
which is basically you want to use this at a high hit pool uh, sorry high hit points guys so like at a high hp percentage that way you get full effect of it so if you know you're about to be uh, taking big damage say like a warrior pops like a war breaker avatar or something or like um you can pre-wall like an rmp's kidney kind of thing so the higher you use this the more value you get out of it so that's how this works that's most windwalker defensives actually so Diffuse Magic reduces magic damage taken by 60% for 6 seconds, so super good into casters. And it also transfers all harmful magical effects back to the original caster if possible. So the main thing that you're going to be reflecting with this, guys, is against priests that are running mind games. So you can instantly reflect mind games back onto the priest. So it works as an offensive as well, because especially into warlocks as well, guys... You can reflect so many of their dots back on them when their stuff is cranking, and it'll do so much damage to them. Sometimes I get like over 150k like damage worth of diffuse magic, so it's super good. Great wall and can be used if offensively as well, which is good. So yeah, yeah, just healing increase, and then we have escape from reality. So this is another great talent which Windwalker gets access to now inside of Dragonflight, which only Mistweaver had in Shadowlands as a legendary. Or sorry, Windwalker could use it as a legendary as well, but we never used it. Basically, it was just like a Mistweaver thing. So, yeah, you get double port, so you can port again instantly after using it. So you can port to one place, port back, and during this time, Vivify healing is increased by 25%, and 50% of the cost is refunded. So, yeah, it's just like you can port, heal yourself up behind the pillar with Vivify. So, yeah, it's a great ability there. So, yeah, we're going to be looking at the Windwalker side of the tree now for the um, images build. So basically, it works around modifiers and stuff, just stacking spin mods with like Blackout Kick stuff and uh, Strike the Wind Lord R's case. So, yeah, Fist of Fury here, where you take that, that's going to be doing um, lots of damage. And it also works as a defensive with the parry that you get from Turbo Fist. So while you're channeling Fist of Fury, it parries um, all melee attacks and stuff. So it's super good, guys. It works very, very well defensively as well say like a warrior's running you down you get spear bash and you have nothing to press you can't get out of the spear you can't run and stuff so you could just channel a fist of fury there and then be forced to like storm bolt to break it or you just reflect all their damage or sorry not reflect you parry all of their damage during that time so yeah it's super good uh a really good windwalker monks can like pre parry kidney shots from rogues and stuff like you can there's a lot of outplay potential with this ability so yeah touch of karma that's going to be one of our main defensive cooldowns as well. It's not that good defensively lately, but maybe the healing or sorry, the health pool increase will make it do better on Dragonflight. It's too soon to know how Karma is going to be performing, but yeah, Karma does big damage as well too. So if you're like wanting to stay offensive, you have people training you, you're trying to run someone down, you can apply the touch of Karma and keep at them. So yeah, Ascension, so maximum chi increased by one, energy and re energy regen, always good. Power Strikes, just Tiger Palm Dam, and one additional Chi. Every 15, so yeah, that's nice, more Chi. Um, okay, so Fist mods here, 20%. 15% Fist mod. Pretty much that's about it. There's like another little effect with Chi there, but... Um, okay, Widening Whirl, so Spinning Crane Kick Radius increased by 15. We only take this kind of to get access down to Mark of the Crane, because if you were going to uh, sorry, take Touch of the Tiger here, you'd have to put two points in. So yeah... This is where the build damage is coming from, guys. So, Mark of the Crane, but we're going to cover... So, Flying Super Kick, Mobility, Glory of the Dawn. So, when you press Rising Sun Kick, it has a chance to proc a second time, dealing a reduced amount and restoring Chi. So, your images can proc this as well when you do, and it does crazy dam, and RSK damage is always welcome inside of the Leg Sweep Go. So, yeah. Shadow Boxing Treads, Blackout Kick damage is increased by 10% and strikes an additional two targets. So that works in with another ability that we have. We'll talk about in just a second here. Storm Earth Fire. So this is going to be your main damage cooldown as a Windwalker Monk. You want to tie this with every leg sweep. You never want to be using Storm Earth Fire without a leg sweep, guys. That way you're going to stagger your ghost and you will have very little pressure because Windwalker Monk basically works around killing inside of leg sweep windows. So just keep that in mind. Try not to use it um, without a leg sweep, okay? So Strike of the Windlord here, this is another one of our biggest burst abilities currently on Dragonflight, and it's how we're getting kills inside of a leg sweep. So Strike of the Windlord, big damage, also slow. Hit combo here, 
So basically, hit combo works in with your mastery. You do not want to be breaking. Um, you don't want to be breaking your mastery. So don't use the same ability twice in a row when you're running hit combo, unless you're able to farm it out before you're like doing big damage again, kind of thing. So like, you could be farming spinning crane kicks behind a pillar, spam black hook kick, but then you need to get your hit combo up again. So, yeah. Um, Thunder Fist here. So this is actually insane for Herbers, guys. So when Strike a Windlord um, hits a target, it gains a stack of Thunder Fist depending on the amount of targets that have been hit by it. So Thunder Fist discharges upon melee strikes, so like your autos and stuff, or like abilities, and it deals nature damage. So it does huge damage. I've hit over 100k th uh, Thunder Fist currently. Um, on the build that I've been running and it's very good huge damage. So yeah, great ability And then yeah teachings of the monastery so tiger palm causes your next blackout kick to strike an additional time stacking up to three so Here is where we're getting a ton of damage from blackout kick guys So blackout kick is hitting really hard working with shadow boxing treads now as well and doing big aoe cleave so it also has um, a 12% chance to reset the cooldown of rsk when you use this when you Press blackout kick, so yeah, that's always good. Drinking horn cover. Duration of Stormworth Fire is extended for 0.4 for every chi you spend. This was bugged in arena, but I feel like it'll be decent if it starts working. That way you can run people down for longer with like your zoo and after your first like sweep go kind of thing. So yeah, now we have we already went over shadow boxing treads and stuff, but dance a chi G. So um this ability is super important. It's gonna be an auto proc for your spinning crane kick which is free to cast and deals 200% increased dam. So that tied in with Mark of the Crane as well as Crane Vortex here. And then we have some spin modifiers on this side with Fast Feet. So an additional 10%. So basically there's so, so many um, spinning crane kick mods, guys. And especially once Windwalker tier gets um, into the game when Season 1 starts, there's also an additional 30% with that tier after you fist. So spin's going to be doing crazy damage. You're going to be seeing those big, big spin one-shots if you farm up a proc before a go. So yeah, uh, we got to Zuen and Tiger Lightning. So Zuen deals 10% of the damage you've dealt in the past 4 seconds, every 4 seconds kind of thing. So that's some decent burst damage and consistent ramp damage from Zuen. As you guys know, that tiger is quite scary sometimes. Okay, Zoan's Battle Gear. So RSK reduces the cooldown of Fist. And when Fist ends, it increases the uh, crit chance of RSK by 5 seconds. So this works in very well with a lot of things that Windwalker has in their build. Transfer the power. So Blackout Kick and RSK give you a stack. And each stack up to 10 increases the damage of Fist by 3%. So this is going to be super, super good when... You just finished like a leg sweep go and have forced some cooldowns on a target and you're able to pop your Zuen on an off target and run them down with Kiefer's, Kiefer Skyreach and the remaining um, time on your images with like a big Fist of Fury into like an RSK and stuff and potentially you'll still have some Thunder Fist stacks so it'll do very very good damage guys. Uh, this ability here it just ties into your go pretty well like after it so you still have pressure. Bone Dust Brew, the Shadowlands ability. So you're going to be throwing this on top of your in-caps, depending on what comp you play, or just on your go, and just it mimics a little bit of uh, damage. And yeah, a lot of monks don't like this ability because it really ties you into the one minute, as well as Kiefer's and stuff, but it's 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 going to be okay. It'll probably be meta again, unless when Walker sees some changes, guys. So yeah, Bone Dust Brew, and you'll take a two nation, so it gets increased damage and healing by 20%. So yeah, and then we have one more thing here, Invokers, 33% haste after summoning your Celestial, so that's Zuen the White Tiger. So you summon Zuen, you get 33% haste, so that's going to tie in super well with Transfer the Power on a swap and stuff when you're doing um, a Kiefer swap with your remaining go. So that's pretty much it for the Spinning Crane Kick and like um, Storm Earth Fire build that I've been using, guys, and that I think will be meta in the Season 1 of uh, Dragonflight. And yeah, we're going to take a look at the Serenity build now. We're not going to go in-depth to the talent tree like we did with this one just because we kind of already did it. It just basically changes a couple things up and it's just a one-shot build. I wouldn't see it being used at a high rating depending whether or not you're using Feline Stomp, right? So we'll take a look at that build now, but just keep in mind this is probably the build you're going to be using for the majority of Season 1 if there are, or if there, uh, are not changes, so yeah.
Alright guys, so the only difference really for this build here is that we are running Serenity and we're not going down the AoE side of the tree. So this build works by applying Feyline Stomp, which gives you an 8% damage increase on the ground. And then you're going to be like incapping into a sweep, Tiger Palm Serenity, Strike of the Windlord, Rise and Sun Kick with all of the modifiers that we talked about in the previous clip. As well, on this side, I have opted into Eye of the Tiger for a little bit of dot damage, and we have strayed away from some of the healing increase for Windwalker. And we have picked up Resonant Fist just to do a tiny bit more damage inside of the go if it procs. So basically, this build is just max damage inside of a leg sweep, cheesing for a one shot. It's fun to use, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend using this once you get into the higher CR bracket, but you can have a lot of fun with this build inside of BGs and like rated battlegrounds and stuff, or even just like skirmishes or like low CR twos or threes with your friends, depending on if one walker is your main or your alt. So I definitely recommend giving this build a try as it can be super fun and it can do some crazy numbers. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this build. Alright guys, so going into Season 1 of Dragonflight, Windwalker is going to have a new tier set. This tier set effectively gives you a um, buff for 20 seconds, which can be applied to your next Rise and Sun Kick or Spinning Crane Kick, and it increases the damage of them by 30%. So that happens when you uh, Fist of Fury, so like your fist will give you that buff. And from there guys, you're basically going to want to have some Chi, and like you're going to use that fist of course just to get that first. And you're going to be applying some Mark of the Crane stacks to enemies nearby, which is this here. It effectively gives you 18% for, um, it can be up to 5 targets and it lasts for uh, 20 seconds. And you get it by Tyra Palming, Blackout Kicking, or Rising Sun Kick nearby targets. So you do that guys, you're going to get those stacks right. And then you'll have some Chi, you're going to do an Incap, Bone Dust, Sweep, Tiger Palm, Images, Strike of the Windlord, Rising Sun Kick. And here is when I would use my Zuen. And if you're getting any proc through at that time, guys, you can dump the proc in the go too, because that's prio. So you'll use like a Zuen and fixate your images on a different target and like Fist of Fury with the Invoker's buff that you get into like an RSK and a Spinning Crane Kick if you get that proc. So your procs are going to be like the huge damage, but um, Strike of the Windlord and Rising Sun Kick are the um, main prio abilities that you want to use in your leg sweep if you don't get a proc. So yeah, pretty much dumb down. The damage rotation is pretty simple. And just mash those spinning crane kick procs if you guys get them and make sure you're keeping your mark of the crane stacks up as much as possible as well as pushing for those procs before the go so yeah when walker burst is pretty simple it's just a little bit of stuff that you have to do prior to the go so if you're gonna have those big goes at least Okay guys, another useful tip I can give you for Windwalker, which kind of relates to the Mark of the Crane Spinning Crane Kick build, is if you don't have time to set yourself up with some stacks prior to the go and say you're against like a Warlock or something, like a Demolock, they have lots of pets, right? So what you can do to kind of counteract this and make it so you are as efficient as possible, you can do your in-cap, Bone Dust, Sweep, Images, then Tiger Palm, then Fixate into your go. As you can see, I didn't hit the nearby target and it applies a Mark of the Crane with my images. So that can give you an extra two stacks of Mark of the Crane as well as the um, initial one on the target that you're hitting. So that's a super useful trick to be as efficient as possible on your go with your images when there's nearby targets when you're playing Mark of the Crane. All right, homies, so with the Serenity build, there's not as much pre stuff that you can do prior to the go in order to increase the damage and like setup of it other than just using a fist of fury to proc your tier set bonus which will give you the empowered rise and sun kicks as well as just having your hit combo stacked so what you're going to be doing guys is you'll chuck a feline stomp into an incap into a sweep into a tiger palm serenity strike of the windlord rise and sun kick and you can just press another um, blackout kick into an rsk and then if you don't kill there guys the sweep's over by then you can just like zoom in and chase him down with the remainder of your serenity and yeah it's pretty simple most of the time you're going to be killing with just the strike of the windlord rise and sun kick or even just like the blackout kick and rsk after if your first initial two abilities don't kill but the strike and the rsk do insane damage with this build and usually it will kill the only thing that sucks about this build as i said before in the previous clip is that using feyline like pre 
gives him kind of time to react. So that's other that's like the only drawback about this build, other than the fact that Serenity is a one minute and thirty second cooldown. So yeah, the build's a lot of fun to use though. That's the burst rotation for it. Alright guys, so going into Season 1 of Dragonflight, you can kind of play whatever race you would like. However, there's a few that I would recommend you guys giving a shot. So, the reason you can play anything you would like is just to the fact of having 15% CC reduction baked into your gear set. So you'll have 10% from your trinket bonus, and then 5% from a crafted piece of gear, which you're going to make uh, via professions. So, yeah. So the main, th the main um, race I would recommend playing, guys, is a dwarf or a Dark Iron Dwarf. So going into that, their racial is going to be very beneficial for you since you um, lack defensives kind of as a Windwalker, I'd still say, even though you have a bit more going to Dragonflight now. So um, the racial effectively removes all poison, disease, curse, magic, and bleed effects on you. And if you're a Dark Iron, it gives you primary stat based on how many you purge. Or if you're a regular Dwarf, then you get just a flat 10% physical wall. So it's a great defensive i'd say yeah obviously like if you want to be a little bit more offensive you can play dark iron but it's just all around you're mainly taking dwarf or dark iron for the um the buff or sorry the debuff purge so yeah it's gonna be very very good into comps like jungle guys because feral actually destroys windwalker and just having that alone is gonna make you so much stronger into that comp because you can help your healer out by kind of getting every single bleed off of yourself so it's gonna be great you just gotta be careful into warlocks because i think if you do purge like a ua with it you'll take damage for that so yeah there's a couple other races that i'd say are above others and that would be orc just because they have a 20 percent stun reduction human because you can cycle their trinkets for stuns more often than any other race in the game um and then we have night elf guys so night elf is going to be decent if you're like insane so it'll, it'll be very good if you're insane because you'll have a two minute basically immunity that you can try to like pre-immune spells and cc and stuff so that's shadow melt so yeah that's pretty much it for the race recommendations guys i'm currently playing a panda but i do plan on swapping off a panda once i start to get later into the season and really start to push some ratings so yeah there's there's not going to be a huge gap between the races but just i feel like dwarfs racial is so strong and this especially now that we have cc reduction baked into the kit you can kind of roll off of orc and pick whatever you'd like now so yeah that's it for races Okay guys, so this clip here is dedicated to Ring of Peace and how you can use it defensively to help you set up your ghosts. So we're just going to see here, I have Leg Sweep and everything ready to go. So I get a proc on the Hunter here, I have a stack of Mark of the Crane, so that's going to increase my spin damage on the go. I get the Hunter into an in cap, and I see that the Druid's super close by. So what I'm going to do here guys, is I ring the Druid on top of the Hunter. They both have no Trinket and the Pets in the mix, so that means no Pet Sack for this go. So I get a Sweep on everything here. And then I just unload on the Hunter and take him alive. So that's a perfect example of using Ring of Peace offensively. And another kind of hidden tip that you guys, or some of you guys might not have known prior to this clip here. So yeah, Ring of Peace is super fun. And when you get a setup like that, you're going to love it, guys. It feels great. Alright guys, so this little clip here is just going to be highlighting how Windwalker can use their abilities to outplay teams goes when they're out of CC and they're able to save their team. So what happens here is the Paladin gets a full rep on my healer, I'm not able to incap it in time. And the Rogue pushes into me here, and he's looking for a kidney guy, so I'm already quite low due to the SP just pumping um, Shadow Crash on me there with some dots and stuff. He's going to be putting up Devouring and Plague in a second, so I'm taking big damage going to this thing. So what I do is I chuck a ring down at my feet so the rogue isn't able to connect on me with the kidney there so he'd be forced to step kidney and if he does that he'll be bounced out of the ring when he's on global before he could even press cloak to stop the bounce from happening so ideally he's going to be looking for a goal in my boomkin now so he's going to step kidney my boomy out of form so I see that happening guys and I instantly port and I'm going to drop an in cap onto him to stop the damage so you can see he just applied a shiv there so the boomkin was going to be taking some big damage with healing redux so yeah, right away, we're able to greed all of our trinkets as my healer is going to be popping out of CC 
before the rogue does and my boomkin will be out in a second as well where he can pop bear form and kind of top himself up with like a frenzied regen or something so yeah this is just kind of an example of how you should be using your toolkit as a windwalker to help your team when enemies are setting up ghosts <laughs> Alright guys, so we're going to talk a little bit about the importance of pre-walling or like pre-karmaing a go kind of thing. So um, as a Windwalker in Arena, the main time you're going to be dying is in stuns. We die super fast in stuns from 100 to 0 and with our kit, there's a lot of outplay potential just due to the fact that you can pre-wall goes quite often. So we have... A diffuse so that's a magic pre-wall that's good into rets and stuff like you could pre like pre-diffuse like a hodge on like wings and stuff if your healers in cc dampen harm is just a flat like little damage reduction which makes bigger hits hit for a little bit less or lessens the hit of bigger hits so and like fort brew and stuff and you can also like pre-port go so like port out of their setup so they have to run over to you and by the time your healer will kind of pop out of cc so yeah, it's like realizing situations that you need to be pre-using abilities will just come with experience, guys. So say you're against a rogue mage, right? So you know that the rogue mage, ideally, they want to have CC instantly on both of you. Say like the rogue saps off target, the mage DBs the kill target, the rogue kidneys off. But if you realize that your healer um, gets sapped kind of thing and the... Um, the mage hasn't db'd you yet you're gonna have a few or like you're gonna have like a second not even a second sometimes you'll have like a millisecond to kind of react and you can press port you can pre-wall you can throw a ring of peace at your feet so the rogue might not be able to get those restuns on you with the cheap shot unless he trades like cloak or something so it's just situations like that which will kind of they'll they'll make you a way better monk guys if you're able to get these pre's off and use them properly and use your kit to its full potential so i'm just going to show you a little clip here i was doing windwalker 1v1s on my stream um my friend here nate he is a very high experience windwalker he's been rank one before and he's like four times rank one in dh so he's a very good player so i'm just getting my port down i'm going to be pushing in in a second here guys so i know that windwalkers go is in cap into sweep right so i have to try to pre-use a defensive cooldown when i feel like i'm going to incapped and when he incaps me this means he's not able to set up an incap go for another 30 seconds if i pre-walled it so there's a lot of outplay potential i'll be able to do to uh, outplay his sweep guys so i push in i'm going to go around the corner in just a second here i pop my fortifying brew as you can see in the top up here so the fortify brew is up and i pre-walled his incap so he realizes that I pre-wall his in-cap. He's kiting back over there. I know that my port's there. What I'm going to be doing, guys... Okay, so here's here's another thing that Windwalker has going into Dragonflight. So with Fortifying Brew now, they have a dodge chance. So we have a 25% chance to kind of dodge any stun or ability on us. Or sorry, certain stuns and stuff. Like you can't dodge cheap shots and stuff. But So what I'm going to be doing is I port on top. So also, guys, I'm not scared of his leg sweep right now. So he could just he could sweep me anytime, and I'm not scared because I still have nine seconds of fortifying brew up. So I know I won't die in a sweep, and I'll be able to greed my trinket. So what happens is my fortifying brew actually immunes his sweep at the 25% dodge chance. So what I do now is I incap him into a sweep. I do my go. I think that he's able to save his uh, trinket here just due to the fact that he's an orc. But I do huge damage. I get him very low, and I am like. I'm steps ahead of him now, guys. If we pop Fortifying Brew at a low HP, he's going to chuck a ring there. I ring him back into myself, and then I'm going to be trying to, like, root him into more damage and stuff. So another thing, guys, with Touch of Karma, if a Windwalker applies this to you, you can diffuse magic the damage as well. So diffuse can be used defensively against Windwalkers. Okay, so I'm basically just running him down now. And at this point, guys, I've basically kind of won the arena. He's so far behind now, there's not much he can really do. I just stay on top of him and finish out the duel. So just right here, that kind of shows you guys how important pre-using defensive cooldowns as a Windwalker Monk uh, is and stuff. So it gets you really ahead. You don't have to trade Trinket as often. And yeah, your health is, you're going to be a lot healthier popping out of stuns and stuff. So yeah, pre-using is super important on Monk. All right, guys, this is just another super quick example of pre-using things as a Windwalker Monk in Arena. So you'll see that my Druid is sapped over here and i know that the rogue's going to be pushing over me looking for a stun so what i'm going to be doing guys instantly i'm going to be dropping a ring of peace so now i see the rogue pop out on the ring and what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to chuck a disarm in just a second here you'll see that i disarmed the rogue so i pre-disarmed the cheap shot there by the rogue guys 
and then instantly the rogue trinkets that. So now I know that the rogue's going to have no trinket for my leg sweep. So what you'll see here in just a second. So I just, I freaking press fortifying brew and I'm chilling here now. So starting to ramp some damage up. I get a double sweep. So I know the rogue's not able to trinket this. So the rogue basically just like loses the game guys. So that's kind of just shows you how important and how ahead pre-using cooldowns as a one walker monk can get you inside of the arena. So yeah. Okay guys, so for add-ons as a Windwalker in PvP, you essentially just want Serena, or S Serena or Gladius. So it basically does the same thing, it's just gonna show you uh, enemy player frames on the side and have like DRs and like trinkets and stuff and just lots of useful information as well as like cast bars and stuff for enemies. Um, weak ores, so this is when it becomes kind of more personal with the class that you're playing. So you can have, say like a Kiefer Skyreach weak aura, you can have, um, like a touch of karma weak aura, which will show you when your karma is about to fall. Like a hit combo weak aura, which keeps your mastery like rolling. It shows you when you break it kind of thing. So yeah, that's weak auras. I'll leave like a couple in the description for the ones that I use for uh, Windwalker weak auras. Okay, so Omnibar. This essentially lets you track enemy cooldowns inside of the arena. And you can go through it and create a profile and track what like offensive CC and CDs like that an enemy has, you can like track whatever you want with it. It's super useful. I'd highly recommend getting this add-on. Um, Omni CD, so this does the same thing for you pretty much, but it has um, icons beside your uh, party frames, which will show you what your teammates have and what you have for yourself available as like cooldowns, offensive, defensive, and CC. So tell me when, so that's basically just you're going to be able to put big icons for your um, abilities on your screen. So, like, I have, like, one for my kick and, like, storm with fire and, like, leg sweep and stuff and, like, a couple defensives to kind of just be an extra indicator for me if I'm, like, panicking and want to look super quick at what I have. But I don't really use it that often because I'm so used to looking down at my main bar, but I've added it recently. Hopefully I get used to it sometime soon. But, yeah, it's, it's nice to have for sure. Big debuffs. So this is one of the most important PvP add-ons that I'd highly, highly recommend downloading, guys. It kind of just shows um, big debuffs right beside um, enemy player name nameplates and stuff. So say a demon hunter has blur up, it'll show you that he has blur, like a big icon, and highlight how much time's left on it. That way, like say you're a windwalker and you don't sweep into his his blur. Kind of important things. to have big debuffs, and then. Going forward, you're just going to want to take details, so this has a lot of uses, and it can kind of highlight what happened to you inside of an arena, or what you or your party may have not been doing properly, like say you're missing kicks or not kicking enough, it'll show stuff like that, and just show flat damage and healing, so yeah, those are the add-ons that I use for one walker and PvP, I'd highly recommend getting all those guys, and if you don't like tracking enemy CDs with Omnibar, you can also download a cool one called nameplate cooldowns it'll essentially have their cooldowns above their nameplate and you can track it that way or you can do both it's totally up to you so yeah those are the add-ons i use for one walker okay guys so the stat priority for wind walker going into season one you're going to want to be stacking a lot of versatility so every piece needs verse and then you'll have mastery and also you're going to want to pick up some crit as well so there's not going to be all mastery pieces for the conquest set so you're going to have to pick up some crit naturally anyway but i still like to have around 20 percent crit for my um stats when i'm going into a new season especially when i'm playing key for sky reach so keepers gives you 50 percent crit and then having the flat 20 percent as well will give you a 70 percent crit chance on your keepers window so just having that little bit extra crit is super nice especially for your burst as a windwalker so yeah that's pretty much it for stat prio Okay, guys, that's going to wrap up the guide, okay? So <laughs> I know it was pretty freaking long, so I hope some of the stuff in the video helps you guys on Wind Walker this season. This video honestly took me so long to make, so I'd appreciate it if you guys left a like on the video and sub to the channel. I stream very, very often on my Twitch at twitch.tv slash TV, doing lots of Windwalker content and messing with my community, so feel free to stop by the Twitch if you have any questions left unanswered. Also, just let me know in the comments below what kind of Windwalker video you'd like to see next. But until next time, guys, I'm out. Peace. Yeah.